All right, hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bowling Wilderness Podcast. Today we're going to talk about these binos right here. I'll bring you in and show you close up. But these are Kawa. These are Kawa 8.5 by 32s. And uh, they are pretty amazing binoculars. I've been using them for a few days now. And uh, but we're going to show you some size comparisons here for it. This is my binoculars I have. Um, but I have these uh, uh, 10 by 42 Swarovskis. These are actually like 28 years old. They were redone by Swarovski about five years ago. Uh, but these are 10 by 42s, giving you a comparison between the two of them. So you can see. Okay. And then we have... My uh, 7 by 30s these are Swarovski 7 by 30s again, 28 years old. Kind of showing you a size difference there. And then we have my Vortex Diamondback 8 by 32s compared to these, which are a 6.5 by 32, 8 by 32. So you can kind of see. I'll show you some more as well, too. Um, but basically, the reason I bought these... These ones here, these Swarovski 10 by 42s I, I really only use them out west, things like that when the time allows. Uh, I bought them for that caribou hunt that I went on uh, 20 years ago, 20, 25 years ago, whatever they were, 26 years ago. Um, but uh, that's what I bought those for. Actually, I think, yeah, I want to say, because uh, the Bella's age, those are actually 22 years old. These are 20, 21 years old, so not 28. Sorry, so 22 and 21 years old is how old these are. But, uh... Um, these are my all-time favorite. These 7 by 30s which they don't make anymore. I love them. Now I can buy 10 by 42s all day long. So these ones I don't mind beating up a little bit or anything I need to um, kind of thing. But these they don't make. So these I'm very particular about and I only use them in a tree stand. I do not climb a tree with them or go down. They just sit like this while I'm in a tree stand deer hunting. And I can use them and that's it. And then they go in my pack um, because I do not want these damaged or hurt or anything because again I cannot replace these. Um, so for all of my hog hunting and stuff like that, that I did, uh, three years ago, I bought these, these Diamondback, uh, eight by 32s Vortex, and, uh, they've been fantastic. These things have been beat on levels that are unimaginable. They have been, uh, stepped on, look at, I mean, you can see they have been beat, beat up pretty hardcore, uh, covered in DEET, chemicals, everything you can think of. The eyepieces are actually glued here, so they can't move because I stepped on them once, um, but you can actually see the glue in there. But they are glued in to where they are. Um, but they're still a fantastic binocular. They've been great, especially for the $200 range. But now that uh, um, with the method of hunting I'm doing where I'm looking for feed trees, I'm running around during the, the middle of the day um, with just my bow and my binoculars and uh, in my compass in my pocket and my bug spray. And I am scouting and learning where I want to hunt at for that evening and then for the next day. Um, hunting down feed trees. I need binoculars to be able to identify the stuff in that tree that I'm looking for on a lot of these. And I need binoculars with me. Well, when I'm hunting, and my when I'm whitetail hunting, these are the ones that go with me. I'm not taking these and scouting with them all day. Again, chances of beating them up, falling with them, stuff just happening to them. I don't want to deal with that. Um, and I thought, well, it's time for, uh, so I could use these ones. And I thought, well, it's time for a pair of binoculars for in a truck to leave in there all the time. So when I do scout, I can grab them. Um, I'm obviously not going to take a pair of these and set these on my dash of my truck uh, and then leave it. Somebody will bust my truck window and take these in a heartbeat. So that's not really an option. So these are going to be dedicated truck binoculars now, these uh, Vortex ones, and scouting for the day. So these will be what I wear when I'm scouting midday, that kind of stuff. They'll live in my truck. That's where these are going to be. So I bought another pair to use for my hog hunting and things like that. Um, I was originally looking at getting the Mavis, or uh, Maven, sorry, Maven, the uh, 6 by 30s um, Aaron Farley had those when we were at that hog camp uh, earlier this year, and I looked at them, and I really liked them a lot. Um, but the price is, you know, you're almost $600 for those. And uh, after shipping and taxes and all that, you're almost $600. And I found these. And uh, it was funny because I've been researching binoculars, researching binoculars. I had the Mavens in a cart. I even had them customized because uh, they were running a September special where you can customize them. Uh, so I, I was ready, but I just never pulled the trigger on them. And then all of a sudden when I was getting ready to buy them, uh, B&H Photo sent me these as an ad. They popped up as an ad. Now, I'm a member of B&H because of the fact that I buy, you know, thousands of dollars a year in camera gear there. And uh, so, but anyway, so I looked at it, and I got these for $359, and they gave me 
uh, a free Vortex, you know, one of these crossback vinyl vinyl harnesses, which I'm actually going to use on my Swarovski 10x42s here. Um, but anyway, so I thought, you know what, let's go research those and take a look at them. And I found out, and they use the uh, uh, Schmidt and Peckin, or however you say it, they use those same high-quality prisms that a lot of your higher-end glasses use. Um, and uh, they're, they're really good. They're nitrogen-filled, they're waterproof, they're everything, but they're a 6.5 by 32. So I figured, well, that's very similar to my beloved 7x30s that we have here. So I'm like, that's almost identical. 7x30, 6.5x32. Okay, very similar. Very similar as far as that stuff goes. And I thought, you know what? 359 bucks is actually about the same price. Actually, I think now they're 400 uh, They're 399 now, I think. Um, but... Uh, but, I mean, that's about the same price as what the Mavens were. You know, I mean, or, I mean, not, sorry, not the same price, but that's still, you know, almost, that, that's a, 200 bucks less than what the Mavens are. And I'm going to wear them hog hunting all the time, so I'm going to beat them up. So, uh, you know, like these ones got beat up. So I thought, well, let's give these a try here. These are going to be, I like the price a lot better, and all the reviews I read were fantastic. All the stuff I read was fantastic. And uh, so I went ahead and bought them. So that's where we stand. Let's set these aside. And talk about these here. So this binocular, um, it is it is very sharp. It is very very clear, very sharp to look through, very fast and and legit focus wheel. The only thing about it now, I'm not somebody who cares about all the nitty gritty stuff, even though I'm a photographer and I live my life through a lens. I, there's a lot of people out there that take things way too far. They get too nitpicky on stuff. If your eye can see really good with it and the color rendition is good and everything works good, then they're good, okay? The rest of the stupid little stuff as far as like how this is on text, people do these lens tests and all. I, I don't care about any of that. What I can tell you is that these gather low light as good as these do. Without a doubt, these 7x30s, I've been using these in a stand, um, but these gather incredible low light capabilities. Very on par with these. The centers of these are very on par with these, okay, as far as the detailness, the sharpness, and all the stuff we're looking for. Color rendition is really good. Um, I don't really care too much about color rendition, even though I'm a photographer, but if color's not exactly perfect, I fix it, okay? Nikon runs blue, Canon runs a little yellow. Everybody's, every lens has got their own little thing. Like I said, people get way too picky, and I get it if you're birding and you're into that stuff, but we as hunters, that stuff doesn't matter, okay? Um, so for, for what we need and what we're going to use it for, flawless, okay? Incredible low light gathering wide field of view. The field of view is huge on these, okay? These, the field of view on this is just massive, okay? Um, you can look the numbers up if you want. Maybe I'll run them in here for you if you want to get all technical, but in, in practical purposes, wide, ultra wide. The only thing you do notice on these is because it is such a wide view, on the very slight on this edge and very slight on this edge, you get a little bit of distortion there, just ever so slight. Um, but again, it is because it is such a wide view. My camera lenses, some of my $3,000, $4,000 camera lenses, they do the same thing. Wider, wider the lens gets, the more fall off you get on the sides. It just is what it is. Um, and these are no different. But the center spot, the 90% of this barrel is tack sharp spotless you get just that little bit on the edges which is to be expected and you can still see through it and still make them work and they still are perfect i'm not taking anything away any power low power or uh low power binocular like that that that's that wide is going to have that so i will take that trade off all day long to be able to see that wide even though it's just a little out of focus on the outside edge i'll take it all day um these are absolutely awesome very, very nice. And I love the fact that we have multi-steps on here. I'll bring them in and show you. Let's bring you in. So I might come out of focus here a little bit. But so you have detents on these. Okay, so there's all the way down for glasses. Plus it clicks and stops right there on a twist. Clicks and stops right there on a twist where I'm using it. Also goes up one more. So you have four hard locking detents in there, which is really nice. Swarovski doesn't have that. These just twist and you stop them wherever you want along the way, but there's no detent in there. How do I know that one's the same height as that one? When I actually, again, there we go. Uh, you don't see they're not, you know, it's just nice to have that actual um, real detent in those. So that is a nice feature. Uh, you got your um, control right here for your diopter for so you can tune each barrel together. Um, and uh, they are fantastic glasses. 
Okay, here they are right there. Close up detail of these. I will again, I will put the specs in here for you. Okay, so you will be seeing them roll on here. But I can tell you they are phenomenal. They are incredible. For a $400 pair of glasses, these are very, very impressive. I'm not gonna lie, they are very impressive. Now, again, all things relative. For a $200 pair of glasses, these are fantastic. Are these as good as these? No, they are not. Not even close, sorry. Um, but these are $200 pair of glasses. But they are very good for a $200 pair of glasses. I do not expect these to perform like these do. I, I cannot expect this to do what this will. I cannot expect this to do what this will. And I also cannot expect this to do what this will. It just doesn't work that way. But I will say... In all reality, because now see these have been improved. Like I said, these had to go in for warranty work five years ago and they have been totally redone, recoded and everything. These are the most amazing binoculars I've ever looked through in my entire life. They were good before. How they made them now, I've never seen anything like it. They are off the charts incredible. They are absolutely amazing because they've been totally refreshed by Swarovski and all updated and they are incredible. These ones are not updated and that incredible. They are 21 years old and they are fantastic, but the coding technology and the things like that make these very, very impressive and very similar to these, even though they're not the same. These are good, but these are great. Um, but these are phenomenal. So there is a difference between your glasses. There's no doubt about it. And we're not expecting these to be $1,000 or $2,000 binoculars. What we are expecting them to be is flawless for $400, and they make that happen perfectly. There is no denying that. So this is an incredible binocular. I'm super happy with it. You will see me using it all the time on all my hog hunts. Um, I'm even using it right now in a deer stand. I have been for the last few days because I'm testing it. <clears throat> so I've been out there wearing, using them, low light, all stuff. I'll put a couple little clips in here. But they are incredible. They they fit well. They are very lightweight. They're, uh, you know, you can feel just a smidge more weight. I think it's one and a half ounces heavier than this is. Um, but you can barely feel the weight. You can see the size. They are just a titch bigger, and these are very, so they are very, very compact, okay? Very nice, very compact, um, phenomenal binoculars, just phenomenal, phenomenal binoculars. Now, what I did on here is I just used a piece of paracord, kind of like, you know, I went on the same concept I did here with my hog hunting ones that I had before, but here you notice I used this little button push clip to adjust on these if I needed to. I barely ever adjust those. I don't ever mess with them. So that you put them on, they hang right there, you're done, that's it. There's no mess, no, no muss, no fuss. What I did with these ones, since I barely adjust them, I did the same thing. This is paracord without the uh, guts in it. I put a bowline knot on here and tied it, and then I did a taunt line hitch on here so that I can adjust this up or down wherever I want it on there to adjust the height of these where they're going to ride at. Okay, so it makes it really nice. It's a nice feature. Um, so I'm very, very impressed with these. These, these binoculars are very, very good. Um, I, I got nothing bad to say. I really like them. Um, if I were to knock one thing, I would say that I like how, uh, you, if you look at on here, no, see, they're about the same. It's got to be because of the weight on the tops here a little bit. But these ones, when I put these on my neck, they lay, well, no, yeah, they, they lay more tipped in and flat to my chest. Where those ones, they kind of want to tip out just a little bit. And we're talking ever so slight. Okay, see how that sits right there flat on my chest like that? When I put these ones on, they pop out just a smidge because of that way that weight's designed. You can see them. See how they lean out just a little bit? Now, I've been shooting with these, and I've been shooting the whole time, and I have no issues with that, so it's not like it's a big deal at all. They're very, very compact and small. But I do notice that, uh, that they kind of tip just a little bit away from you, this little gap we got right here and here, okay, versus these ones that lay perfectly flat on you right there, okay? See what I'm saying? See the difference? So that's something that, you know, that something that I could knock slightly. I never even paid attention to how these are, but I'm assuming these let sit pretty flat because these have the heads up high. No, see these tip over too. Yeah, see these tip out just like those ones do a little bit also. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, 
But uh, like I said, these are these are phenomenal, phenomenal binoculars. Very happy with them. Very good quality. I'll bring you in for another quick close up of them, so you can just kind of get a feel for them. And then I'll show you the case and the stuff that it comes with. This is it right here. Again, four position eye guards on there. Focus distance down to like five feet or something. It's amazing what they can do. So there is the binocular. Now, when it comes to what you get with it, you get uh, you get the box. Okay, box is always a good box, I guess. Inside the box, which I'll never use any of this stuff, so I just jammed it in here. Uh, so they're going to give you some guides. Oh, this might even, let's see if it's got some specs in here for you. Uh, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. No, that just uh, tells you what they do. Uh, that's how to adjust it, and that's how to use it, and that's how to hook the strap up. And here's uh, specifications. Uh, here's the specs for the eight by or because they make them in a six and a half by eight, and then you also got or a six and a half and eight power, a ten power. Here they are though in eight by thir or six and a half by thirty twos. So this first row right here, there is your specs. Okay, this first row right here. That is all of your specs. So you can see them right there for yourself. And, uh, but, uh, and, uh, and like I said, they are very good prisms that are in here too, which is really nice. Yeah, they see there's nothing else in there. All right, so um, box wise, that's the box right here. Tells you what model they are, all that kind of stuff. And then we have the case. Case has got a nice clip on the case and you can put it on your belt. So that's kind of a nice feature for the actual case. So this case is not bad at all. They give you a strap. What's the strap like? Not that I'll ever wear it. So what do we get? They give you a very nice strap. If you notice, it is almost identical to what I use on my Swarovskis. This is a little got a little elasticity to it, but I like these. I love these kind of straps because they you can take them. I like them where they're rubber coated like that on the inside here, like this. See, how it's got that neoprene on there. But you can take them and like when I'm in the stand, I don't I don't want anything on my neck. I'm sweating, so I can take these and I set them like that, and they bite on my back of my way back here, and they just stay out of the way, and they're fine. And when I want to use them, I pick them up and use them. But they see how they're staying down there. I like that feature. Gets that weight off my neck. Okay, so I like that feature. That's the reason I use these. So the, uh, the like I said, the strap, I'm going to save this. This is a nice strap. I like the strap. Strap stays. Um, and then they give you all kinds of crap in here. Your eye cups. Uh, stuff, again, I'm not going to use. I'll probably, I'm probably never going to use that case ever again either. But they do give you a rain guard. So you can put a rain guard on here, which does fit nice. Fits really good on there if you want to. Again, this this is something that I'll I'll never use. Um, and then you got your eye cups that can feed on here. You know, you feed them through, and we're just going to stick them on there. But you know, your rain guards. Okay, so those are on there too. So you can actually mount those and have those on there, and they're pretty well built. They're good quality. I'm not complaining about that at all either. This will probably over time break, but you know, the best part about these is you just throw them over there. No reason to even use them. Okay, you wear them like this. When your binoculars fill up with water, you tip them over, pour the water out, and you're good to go. If that didn't work, you take your shirt and you wipe them out like this. Again, these are a tool for me. I'm not babying them. I'm not treating them like gold. I'm not anything. These are a working pair of binoculars that I am going to beat the crap out of. And uh, I want them to be functional. These, these I baby. Okay, these I baby tremendously. When I'm on the stand and then it starts to rain, I take my shirt and I tuck them in my shirt and I hide them because, again, these are heirloom binoculars that I have intentions of passing these down, you know, to my grandson later on in life for both pairs of these. Uh, you know, they were tremendous amounts of money when I bought them. They, uh, I love them. They are incredible binoculars, and that's just what's going to happen with them. So these ones I take very good care of. These two are my beaters. These are my working beaters kind of thing, okay? In the truck all the time now, my hog hunting ones. Love these. So these... Kawa 6.5 by 32, very good binocular, works good, very easy to one-handed focus. The focus is very, very precise and very, very fast. It's very easy to roll in and out of it um, like you want, and uh, they work really, really good. I, I can't say anything else about them, but the clarity and the sharpness of these is insane. 
It is insane. They do a fantastic job. Absolutely fantastic job. So there you go. Little uh, review on these for you. And there'll be a link down below for them as well too. So And uh, some other things for you. But like I said, simplicity at its finest. And a, and a real good binocular. Thanks for watching.